Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with CostelloWellness.com and Adventist Health Partners. And today we're going to talk about the Ebola virus. So obviously this virus has been in the news recently, but Ebola has been around actually since 1976. It's a family of five different viruses, first identified in Central Africa, Sudan, and Zaire, which is now the Democratic Republic of Congo. And this was a virus that they identified and attributed to a natural infection or carrier state in the fruit bats that jumped over into humans. Um, it caused over a 50% mortality rate with bleeding and internal complications. So it was a very significant virus. Uh, but of interest, since 1976, there's been a total of only 1,716 people that have caught this virus uh, since 1976. In just 2014, the West Africa epidemic, there's been 7,100 cases documented with over 3,300 deaths. So West Africa, we're talking primarily uh, Guinea, Sierra Leone, uh, Liberia. These, this is West Africa where these infections are and this hot zone is right now. Um, in the United States, we just had our first documented case of uh, Ebola virus, September 28th. A gentleman named Thomas Duncan came over to visit family from Sierra Leone. He was apparently healthy at the time and then became ill with fever and body aches and flu-like symptoms, was seen at a hospital in Texas, uh, diagnosed with a bacterial infection and sent home on antibiotics. Uh, he returned very ill several days later, September 28th, and only at that time was it identified that he had Ebola virus by his symptoms. Uh, the nurse who saw him reportedly uh, documented that he had traveled to, or he came from Sierra Leone, which should have been a red flag. Uh, the doctor either didn't see this or didn't ask that question or it wasn't in his part of the electronic medical record, didn't know this, and probably appropriately in his defense with fever, achy, and generic symptoms diagnosed him as what should have been a viral infection, but uh, he did go home on an antibiotic and returned later. The incubation period is, for this is between 2 and 21 days, so he would have been infected in Sierra Leone, uh, was not sick at the time that he traveled, and only got sick after arriving to the United States. To the best of our knowledge, the infection is only contagious when you're actively sick. So he, on the airplane, if he truly did not have symptoms, he may not have been contagious until being home for several days. Uh, the infection is primarily found in the bloodstream, so blood is highly contagious. It's also in the saliva, mucous membranes, semen, um, respiratory fluids, uh, so you can cough on somebody theoretically and get the infection. Um, if you touch the infection handling a dead body and touch your mucous membranes, if you have a cut on your skin and you touch an infected um, solution from a person, you can get the infection in your body. Uh, men who get this can actually have it in their semen for up to three months after they recover. So anyone you have had sex with after you got um, the virus, you can actually give to it even though you're back to a normal state. It is for right now not airborne, but that's always the concern or consideration that if a virus becomes airborne, then it is spread much easier to people. So coughing in an elevator, everyone in the elevator could become infected with it. That is not the case right now. The problem epidemiologically with this is tracking everybody that this gentleman was in contact with in that window period when he was sick before he was put in quarantine. The CDC got involved and they determined that there's 46 people that he legitimately came into contact with while he was sick. The pro so those people are now put in quarantine as well. The problem is, is that if you assume he had 46 contacts that if these people are sick, they may have 46 contacts as well, and you multiply 46 times 46, and with one generation of spread, you're talking about 2,100 people who have been exposed. If you multiply that one more time by 46, you're talking about 97,000 people that have been exposed in just two generations. Now, this is a close contact infection, so there's not going to be 97,000 people, but if it was something like influenza or the common cold, it very easily could, within two generations, have been exposed to 97,000 people. So quarantine is going to be a big part of this. Prevention is going to be a bigger part of this. So knowing that people travel from Sierra Leone, if they're coming over potentially with infection, if it becomes epidemic, you'll need to quarantine those people when they travel. You probably should be restricting travel from endemic areas. Uh, we should not be taking people that are sick out of 
hot zones and putting them into the United States. We've now brought three healthcare workers over uh, who contracted the infection. They were brought to the United States for treatment. Uh, we have adequate treatment locally that we don't have to bring people uh, several thousand miles to be brought to the United States to potentially expose other people. The other common sense thing is that you should not be bringing people into the hot zone now. We're talking about bringing 2,000 or more U.S. soldiers for support purposes to the West African area to give logistical aid. They are not medically trained. They should not be brought into an infected or hot zone. The other problem is because of this two to 21 day incubation period that these people are gonna eventually leave West Africa and they're gonna come back to their families in the United States. They're gonna go on deployment. They're gonna go back to, the, to Dallas to their uh, military base and they're gonna potentially expose other people. So you need to keep sick people in place. You need to limit travel out of the hot zone and you need to limit travel into the hot zone of non-essential personnel. This is, these are basic principles of quarantine that have not been exercised at this point. Um, the problem with the virus is, is that it sounds like a regular flu virus initially. So fever, achy, cough, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal discomfort, those are easily regular old flu symptoms and you may go to your regular doctor and not have the classic bleeding and hemorrhaging and kidney failure associated with Ebola virus. So everybody you're gonna become in contact with while you think you have the flu are gonna be exposed as well. And only when you become uh, deathly ill with the virus does it become apparent that you've been walking around for five days with Ebola virus and getting people sick. Um, eventually, if it's in the United States, taking a travel history is gonna be completely uh, not helpful because this gentleman who was sitting next to a child in the emergency room and got them sick if I see that kid in my office with fever and body aches and vomiting, and I say, have you ever been to West Africa? And the answer is no, I'm not gonna get any information until they come back hemorrhaging to determine that they have uh, Ebola virus. So if it becomes a local infection, asking a travel history is gonna become not helpful at that point, which is a little bit scary. So for right now, one case in the United States that was brought here by accident as a traveler, three cases of infected patients that were brought here intentionally, 50% death rate, 7,000 plus people locally in West Africa that have been infected by the infection. Uh, there are experimental vaccines, but nothing at this point which is gonna be given widespread at any, at any near time in the future. Uh, the FDA has allowed two experimental medications to be used for treatment, one called ZMAP and one called TKM Ebola um, that have been fast-tracked and allowed for uh, experimental treatment because of the 50% mortality rate. The FDA will allow drugs uh, much more quickly than something that has a lower uh, risk of dying from the infection. So supportive care right now, isolation. Um, as an interesting side note, the word quarantine comes from the Italian word coranta, which means 40, and back in the Black Plague days when ships would travel from uh, Europe into um, Italy, they were quarantined for 40 days on the ship. They weren't allowed to come ashore, and only after 40 days, if no one was so showing signs of uh, the Black Plague, were they allowed. So 600 years ago, the Italian government had enough common sense to quarantine people coming from endemic areas. Um, we may need to do that at some point if this becomes epidemic, but unfortunately at the point where it becomes serious enough and high enough numbers, quarantining foreign countries is not gonna help because it's gonna be a local infection. So uh, we hope that doesn't happen. If there's significant changes uh, in the infection, I'll do an update. Dr. Castello, thanks.